Okay then, so this is a bit of an unusual format for me, but I'd like to do a video where I'm going to talk about a few things that have been going on for me recently, and also a few things that I hope are gonna happen in the future. So somehow this is quite centered around category theory, but this is a bit of a departure from my usual format of videos, which are focusing on particular subjects. So the first thing I wanted to do was talk about why I haven't released many videos recently. So I've been rather busy with work. I'm really enjoying my job working at Planting Space. And that's meant that I've traveled around quite a lot. I've just attended this applied category theory conference. So that was really great fun. Uh, it was really amazing to meet a lot of the category theory community again. And it got me thinking about a few topics to do with sort of recent past and recent future and some things I'm glad that have happened, some things I hope are going to happen. So this is why I want to make this video. So it was really amazing to see everyone at this Applied Category Theory conference. And of course, there was some extraordinary research there. And um, also, quite a few people came up to me and expressed some gratitude for my YouTube channel, which I found really pleasing because I'm very happy when people get something out of uh, these YouTube videos. And um, something a lot of people don't know is that when I made a lot of my Category Theory for Beginners course, I was unemployed and really... Um, pretty obsessed with category theory, but not really part of a community. And the YouTube was my way of kind of channeling my enthusiasm and really having a an audience of people who have enjoyed it has meant an, a great deal to me because it's really allowed me to express myself and sort of basically become a category theorist, I suppose, because somehow the way the world works these days we we seem to need people around or a lot of people do need people around to reflect enthusiasm and to encourage and so on so i've been so uh, happy that other people have got something out of my videos and i also wanted to say a big thank you to my parents for supporting me during those um during that year or so when i wasn't working and i was making those YouTube videos at the time, um, they were just amazingly supportive. And now I think um, now I've got gainful employment from it and so on. It's it sort of paid off. But at that time, they were so good to, to support me in that way. So, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to say is just a sort of thank you um, to people because now it seems that I've sort of... Um, turned a corner and rather than just making category theory videos in my bedroom and hoping that you know someone was going to benefit from them now um i've got this lovely job applying category theory and also um i've been invited to this diverse intelligences summer institute so i'm going to be a faculty member there for a week i'm going to be introducing some um category theory to some uh, of the people there. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's the first thing I wanted to say, basically to thank people for their support and, and everything like that. And I also wanted to reflect a bit on some of the things I've just seen at this applied category theory conference. So I wanted to focus on some of the efforts, which I really think are gonna pay off in huge dividends in the future. And those are the sort of approaches where people are really making category theory more visual. I think that this is really the key to unlocking massive amounts of potential in mathematics. So basically, if you follow my uh, YouTube video, the category theory for beginners course and all that kind of stuff, you'll know that I like to try and draw a lot of pictures. And I really believe that there aren't enough pictures in general mathematics and that, you know, a lot of people, including myself, really think in terms of pictures. And that is the way that we can expose a lot more people to these concepts. It's a way that 
young people can understand. It makes things simpler. It makes things clearer. It makes it easier to do research. I'm a great fan. And one thing I'm sort of seeing, which is gathering more and more momentum, are these different attempts to visualize things in category theory. And I believe that these kind of approaches are going to have huge payoffs. So one of the people who spoke at this applied category theory conference was Bob Coeck, who spoke about a experiment that's been done recently where they've been trying to teach category theory to young people. So using this kind of string diagram based approach to quantum theory, you can explain the ideas very easily in a very visual way, which is easy to think about, easy for young people to get their heads around and basically makes even discovering new results and doing cutting edge research so much easier. So this kind of visual approach to category theory, I think is gonna be the future. Not just this work, but there are various other places where this sort of pure picture-based thinking, which is coming out of this very abstract mathematics and making its way into places where people can understand very easily because everything is pictures. This kind of stuff I think is the future and I think it's gonna have an enormous impact on the way that education works in the future and perhaps even the way that general people think in the future. So there are a few wonderful pieces of software that I think people are developing along these lines. One that I'm an enormous fan of is this homotopy.io. So I did a video on this in this YouTube channel. Um, I don't understand why more people aren't really into homotopy.io because in my opinion, it's one of the most extraordinary pieces of software I've ever seen. It allows us to do higher category theory. So, you know, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional category theory in a totally visual way, in a way that doesn't require any prior knowledge about anything to do with category theory at all. You can literally just start with it and start clicking and start building things. It's very easy to get into. It allows us to visualize high-dimensional structures. It allows us to do topology, and it allows us to do all of these things without requiring any sort of prerequisites, which I think is really extraordinary. Now, um, I do think there's a bit of a learning curve to using Homotopy.io, but it's not the same kind of learning curve as you might find in, say, a category theory course or a topology course or something, where one has to memorize uh, hundreds of different definitions and, also, and get used to all sorts of ways of thinking. With Homotopy.io, it's just a new piece of software, it's sort of, you can use most of it, you can do most of it using a mouse and you just have to get used to the kind of, the way that you can assemble these different shapes. But quite honestly, I would say when you're getting used to that, you're getting used to interfacing with these kind of structures in a fairly direct way. And um, I think that's very beneficial. So when I was younger, I was quite obsessed with trying to visualize four-dimensional space. And really with Homotopy.io, you can literally build things in four-dimensional space and you can, you can slice off pieces and you can project things down by dimensions. So even if you're just interested in geometry, I think Homotopy.io is an amazing piece of software. And it's part of this sort of... Um, and it seems to be, and it seems to be one of a sort of family of different pieces of software that people are making which are taking these clever category theory concepts and making them visual making them accessible to people in general and i see many other efforts along similar lines so here was another one i've just heard about recently uh, wiggle pie i don't know much about it but it seems to be another way that people can visualize these sorts of manifold diagrams and get more understanding of category theoretic structures in higher dimensions. There's also this DiscoPy software, which allows people to draw these wiring diagrams using Python. I've also recently found out about this um, company. So I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, uh, Vieti.io, and they seem to 
um, also be using category theory to allow people to do programming in a very visual sort of way. And I'm working for this company, Planting Space. So we're making software to do knowledge representation and AI, but we also want to be able to visualize the kind of results that we get. So we do that by presenting the user with these sorts of wiring diagrams that show different possible answers to their queries and how we arrived at those answers. So I see all these efforts and I really think that it's this connection with the visual which might end up being the best thing that comes out of the current efforts in category theory. I mean, I am not at all qualified to say this. I only have a very narrow perspective on the sorts of developments that are going on in category theory, but I can't help thinking that if we can provide decent visualizations and we can make it easier, significantly easier to educate new people in this field of category theory, then in the long run, having more people in our subject is going to lead to more developments and it'll be the best thing for us to do in the long run. So one thing I've been thinking about a bit during this conference is this company, Dragonbox. So Dragonbox make software to teach kids mathematics and they do it in wonderful ways. So basically they gamify things. So for example, they've gamified teaching kids how to solve equations. So there are these really engaging games where you're sort of dragging things around to solve these equations. So you'd sort of get X on one side and the numbers on the other side and solve the equation. Now they've dressed it up and made it exciting and made it challenging in the right kind of ways so that it engages people. And I think that what we really, what we really could benefit so much from is something like this for category theory. So something where we can gamify these sort of wiring diagrams. So like I say, at this conference, Bob Coek was illustrating the results of this experiment. There are results which are showing how beneficial it is to introduce young people to these ideas of string diagrams and wiring diagrams, you know, how quickly they get it because it's so close to how our brain works. It, it syncs up so well with how our visual cortex works. And, you know, somehow this idea that we can deform these wiring diagrams, move boxes around, straighten wires and so on, is so natural to us that, you know, you can really, really quickly introduce lots and lots of very powerful concepts through this sort of wiring diagram framework. And I think it needs to be gamified. I think if somebody can start a company or something where they're gamifying these wiring diagrams in a similar way to what Dragonbox is doing, the benefits for the future could be enormous. So I spoke to a few people about this during this conference and some of them said they'd had similar ideas. And I think that this definitely seems to be a great future direction. Who's going to do it? That's a question. I mean, a lot of people um, who are into all this stuff are sort of gainfully employed at universities and so on. Um, we really, you know, but I think if people put a concerted effort into making some kind of gamified way to introduce people into this sort of um, visual approach to category theory, the long-term benefits will be enormous. So there's so many projects that I wish that I had time to do. Um, one thing that I've got into a bit recently is this formal category theory. And much of that can be described in terms of two categories and in terms of the string diagrams, which again are totally visual. So this is sort of my long-term dream, I suppose, uh, what I'd like to do um, with my time is to try and get these um, highly sophisticated and powerful concepts from category theory or from higher category theory, and then make them into pictures, make them to the point where you don't even need words to describe them anymore, make them to the point where we can really get over all of this bullbacky and coding and having to memorize so many definitions and be so good at symbol manipulation 
and really get to the pictures. And I think that the benefits that we're going to get out of that are going to be great because I think that so many of the ways that math communication happens at the moment are just sort of artifacts of our history. You know, there's not many pictures in maths books because pictures were hard to print in books. There's not many colours or videos in in um, sort of old math educational things because those things weren't easy to encode, but now they are. Now we have now we have um, now we have the internet and YouTube and all the rest of it. And you know, soon we're going to have more kind of VR things, more ability to have interactive programs, and I think we we can really use those things to transform not only our mathematics, but our whole language. And I think doing this somehow, in my opinion, I think it it almost requires some sort of modesty, right? That we have to step back from these things that we've already mastered and got our heads around in terms of algebra and all the rest of it. And we need to sort of step back and say, well, okay, but how can we make it more visual? How can we bring it down to earth? How can we make it so that anyone can understand this? And I think that if we can do that, we're going to really make the future better.